to me, uh, them talking to me about FTX and uh, basically we'd talk about FTX for two minutes and then they're like, well, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good because I was using immutable code. I was using Uniswap. I was one of the first people to ever use this. And here, you guys should use this too because here's why it's great. And uh, it's it's actually, it, it sucks for all the people involved in all this stuff. Don't get me wrong. I know this sounds like insincere, but like it really did open up how great the stuff we are involved with is. Yeah, I think that's what I've been highlighting is again, you know, sovereignty what is crypto what is an asset that you hold control of what's the responsibility seed seed words uh you know don't get hacked i mean there's a lot of fear words that are strange to the general person that has never participated and so the the you know i hear this often and i heard it in a stream earlier today it was well it's just you know it's hard okay yeah it's hard okay fine uh, it was hard to learn how to tie my shoes it was hard to learn how to speak a language you know, I did that, you know, as a little baby and I became speaking language. Right. Or, you know, it's, it's these things are only hard if we let them be constantly commented as being hard. Like um, I think that even even when people I, like I, I have some sympathy to a degree and I, I, I and I'm, I, I try to be reasonable in how I respond when people say that they lost their crypto on FTX, Celsius, Three Arrows Capital, you know, whatever it is, Nexo, BlockFi, right? To a degree, I'm like, that's terrible. But you didn't lose your crypto because you didn't have your crypto. It wasn't your crypto. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even crypto. It was a ledger entry that you dealt with on a on a on a cell phone or on a laptop. And you just had numbers, right? But you didn't actually have any control whatsoever. At any time you could have been shut out by government at any time the the assets on that platform could have been taken uh, at any time they could have been uh, used and leveraged against you forcing down your price so you're really not in crypto or own crypto if you're on a platform like that especially a centralized exchange um so like i try to try to balance that response and i i do know people that have lost you know significant money and and you know they talked to, i talked to them about hex a year and a half ago, uh, I remember uh, specific on this person that I'm thinking of right now, and they 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 were lamenting to me about how they had lost money on Celsius, and then they had also after Celsius lost money on FTX. And part of me is like, didn't you learn from your Celsius loss? Like, yeah. what lesson did you pick up when Celsius locked you out of your money? Like, what did you learn? Well, you didn't learn not to take it off of FTX. <laughs> Thank like you. You continued, you know, you continued the same bad habit I talked to you about before. Like, what are you doing? Like yep. some of it is like, like you have to be careful about your tough love approach when you're onboarding people or people that are quote unquote in crypto. Like I deal with people that are mostly real estate or they mostly other investment assets and they, they have people on their stages talking, uh, you know, talking at their seminars about real estate, but they're talking about crypto. And the first thing that they end up saying is, I've got crypto, I've got Bitcoin, I've got Ethereum, and it's, uh, you know, it's on Coinbase. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like, it's not yours. Like, that's the thing I want to drill home, you know. Well, the people who, uh, you know, go from Celsius to FTX and, you know, one centralized platform that they don't, as you said, they don't own their, they don't even own their crypto. They didn't lose it because they never owned it. They kind of, you know, they gave it away. How do we get a hex in that conversation? Is it just... Is like how is there anything else we can do to be like, here's the three buttons, you know, here's the shining big button you should press that says go and don't lose your money, own your crypto, have control of your stuff. And the other two, you know, at least after you get burnt twice, you'll come you'll come here. How do we get that into the conversation? Yeah, another interesting thing is, you know, when you when we talk about some of these things like economics of a supply that inflates or a supply that deflates, when we talk about dollars. You know, the concept of uh, inflation affecting your purchasing power, you know, like you're getting less bread and eggs for your dollar. You know, like we have that explainer and we talk about that in economics. Right. Uh, when you talk about it in cryptocurrency and, you know, again, Hex has a model that is a known set inflation rate and it has this concept of a T-share that is disinflationary or it brings down it, 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 you you over time 
can get fewer and fewer potential um, T shares. So, like some of these have nuance on how we explain them or how I try to explain it. But you know, the point I'm making about the centralized exchange stuff is if if people like to say there's only ever 21 million Bitcoin that's ever going to exist, maybe four million of have been lost or they don't have access to the keys or whatever it is over the past 13 or 14 years. So maybe there's 17 or 18 million real Bitcoin available that could be supply, sold supply or traded supply. And then you have these announcements by centralized exchanges trying to prove that they're solvent and saying, well, we have control of this many Bitcoin and that many Bitcoin. I heard a number the other day, I don't know if it's even true, about Coinbase having 2 million. I don't know what how many they actually hold uh, or how many the coin, the, the uh, grayscale holds or how many, you know, whale XYZ holds. But like, you know, if you're talking about reducing supply available to be sold, there there isn't a better model to me than a smart contract that actually removes that supply. Also impacts the the market cap as far as like a marketing element of what's available to be sold, uh, you know, versus, um, you know, um, T shares. Uh, So uh, there's there's no better thing to to make my effort to explain when it comes to cryptocurrency than Hex, uh, because it is on chain, it is smart contract, you are in control, you do have a choice about early ending or you know actually generating uh, yield because you complete your contract with yourself. Like there's a lot of benefit of going through the tedium of explaining that instead of explaining, you know, this is how you get into Coinbase, this is what you look for on a on a you know the 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 exchange numbers that they're telling you. This is how you you know, how are you being front run by the platform? I think that's one of the issues with Coinbase right now is, you know, so many of the tokens that got launched on that platform have effectively been proven to be front run by employees of Coinbase. They that see was crazy. Your position. They see you're long, you're short. They see when you, you wonder why liquidation wicks stop right after you got liquidated. There's a reason they can see exactly where you're at. Why would they want to go further? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love I love like uh, Richard in conversation when, when I when I was with him in Miami, he had said the same sort of thing. He said, you know, Bitcoin is amazing, but he thinks that Uniswap may have been like more impressive than Bitcoin, like, you know, solving the Byzantine journal uh, generals issue, being able to cryptographically send something of value that, you know, can't be. um uh, duplicated or effectively counterfeited as a transaction. Those are inv- inventions and innovations that we talk about from 14 years ago that still have some some relevance today. But like even Richard had said about you, like how Dixon had said about Uniswap, that's an amazing that you can actually be transacting in code without a center par- center party. You know, They're, they can manage their front end, but the contracts itself of Uniswap are an amazing invention. Is the question how to get CFI people into DeFi or no coiners into DeFi? Or is it both kind of? Yeah. Is it okay? You know, go to this exchange, uh, um, get your money on board. Click I'll just say for my, for my most recent people that I'm kind of getting into crypto because, like, man, prices are down 80 to 95%. I'm telling people, everybody I get into crypto, I tell them. If you buy it now, you're going to lose 50% of your stack at some point. That's just the cost of doing business in crypto. The volatility, you're going to lose 50%. Be prepared for it, but you got to wait through it, basically. Um, but what I've, how I direct all the people I know to get into crypto now is actually Gary told me about this uh, trust token that uh, you can basically wire transfer money straight into a MetaMask wallet. And so I started playing with that and I don't know why more people aren't talking about that. Like it's, it's awesome. Uh, you can bypass Coinbase. You don't have to get crap shoved down your email address every single day. Um, go straight to your wallet. But basically I don't, I usually don't tell people about hex right off the bat. Like usually when I'm onboarding somebody, I tell them like, Hey, you should buy some ETH when it's the right price. And now I'm telling people to go to this trust token deal because of how, just easy it is compared to all these other exchanges it's not even an exchange it's just they send an erc20 stable coin straight into your wallet from a wire transfer and uh like that's is that true me- usd uh yes true. yeah okay. true usd is the dollar version of their erc20 they have um 
Hong Kong dollar, Euro, um, Australian dollar, and American dollar. So they have four versions of currency and they are escrowed. So their SIC code, which is a, you know, a business has a code to it and the SIC code for an exchange, like a, like a crypto exchange, a marijuana dispensary, a hospital, you know, those are all going to have codes for their business, at least as far as American um, uh, accounting and bank interactions and so forth. They use that information. And so banks look at SIC code of a marijuana dispensary. And back when everything was illegal, they, some banks would say, we're not going to transact. So I know uh, federal banks can't interact with marijuana dispensary state banks have to because it's allowed in the state but it's not allowed federally right so you the sic code matters is my point and when you're dealing with um uh trust token or t uh tusd is their dollar version but trust token uh do the research make sure you go to the right website make sure there's not a spoof but uh mm -hmm. trust token they were founded by in 2017 I, I spoke directly to the CEO and the founders back in 2017 before Hex and uh, uh, Stanford. There were Stan Stanford alumni. Stanford's also a major investor. Stanford controls billions and billions of dollars worth of assets um, of all sorts. And uh, Stanford is only comfortable being a, um, uh, a, a, a it's, it's, it's not a percent. I don't even think it's a percentage. It might be a percentage of the total amount that goes into escrow. But the same way that an escrow company works, if you're going to buy a business, you're going to buy real estate, you're going to buy a fancy, expensive, expensive car, you're probably going to use an escrow agent. And they're going to make sure that you receive the title and without any kind of uh, encumbrance of your business or your property, real estate or car. And they're going to make sure that that happens from the seller. And you're, they're going to make sure that your money transacts and, it, and actually gets the endpoint of, uh, of the, the seller, right? So they're, that's their responsibility. And they have a smaller cost, I believe. I haven't looked in a while. They have a smaller cost than if you were to directly buy USDC, which might be zero cost, actually, for USDC. But, um, but I just don't like sending people to a centralized exchange because they have 200 shiny objects. And the novice, the new guy that I just talked about, and I invested time into educating about crypto i really don't want them going into the casino so i choose an escrow agent and the escrow agent uh has 1.5 billion last time i checked of dollar for dollar for erc20 equal like they're not they're not they're not playing in the markets as far as their their quarterly reports their, their margin is basically the fee for service element of an escrow company they don't even have the permission, I don't think, to have centralized exchange functionality like they're, they're, they don't they don't have the FTX type of permissions. Uh, there is no such thing as co-mingling because they don't actually participate in the marketplace. They simply enable you to create uh, as a bridge and they, they, they have the fee service of a bridge of going from a fiat into a into an ERC-20. When I've talked to them most recently, most, most recent time that I talked to them, the, the C-suite at least was about seven or eight months ago. And it was because I was trying to get a fiat bridge for Pulse Chain for a PRC-20 instead of uh, an ERC-20. And right. they've told me that when the code is out, when they can do audit, when they can basically do the same kind of QA they did or uh, the same kind of due diligence before they started issuing on Ethereum, that they have said that they'll 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 consider the PRC version uh, as an option. So, and, sorry. so I like them. I like them for more than one reason. I, and there's as far as like even the dollar into um, into Pulse Chain or ERC twenty or anything like that. Like I spoke at the Pulse Con event in Las Vegas with uh, the founders of Maven Credit Union, and Maven mm -hmm. Credit Union similarly is able to issue a when they when they come online they're not coming online until may but when they come online they will likely also be a fiat bridge into pulse chain because they will be also a, a fiat bridge into into ethereum um as an erc20 uh stable coin and likely a prc20 version of a stable coin as well because they're serving the function 
Uh, as a credit union, you have more permissions than you do as a retail bank. Uh, it's different charters. It has different uh, rule sets in the United States. And their charter uh, is based on, I think, 1934 or 35, something like that, uh, about you know being, banks being able to be credit unions. What is a credit union? And their rule set has more um, liberty than, uh, than retail banks about participating in this crypto market. They actually have parts of their charter that talk about digital assets, you know, like, yeah. like the concept of crypto before Bitcoin existed was actually in the charters of, 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 uh, of credit unions. So and, and, there's a lot of really good stuff about the onboarding uh, through just the, just the conversion of your financial energy in your currency, your, your government currency into the financial representative in cryptocurrency. And they're launching mid-May then? Yeah, the last time I talked with them was uh, directly was maybe about a month after the PulseCon event was over, the Pulse Convention was over. And uh, yeah, uh, also I've connected them with Richard as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on back there. But yeah. Just to finish up on what I was saying about how like I was onboarding people is it just sending them through that TUSD going straight into a MetaMask wallet because you have to have a MetaMask wallet set up to get your money. And then I show them instantly. I actually send them to uniswap.hedron.pro because Hex is in that, uh, it's in the default at the very top. But I just, mm -hmm. I tell people at first to buy some ETH, but then I basically trickle in what Hex is and why, um, why basically telling people why I wasn't involved. Like my dad was here in the office the other day and he was like, cause I had to tell him he knew about crypto or my crypto, but at pretty much, he's like, he's seen all this FTX stuff on the news and he's like, how did you not get caught up in all this? I'm like, well, I, uh, I was in this hex deal and me and some people use this, uh, all this decentralized stuff that has no people that can fail. So that's basically the point in how I went to all this family stuff when people were bringing up the F FTX situation. And um, that worked out really good for me getting people actually interested compared to the pitch I was having to make a couple of years ago, you know, um, seeing that it actually succeeded through all this chaos. But uh, my other question I was going to have was, uh, Gary, it seems like not many people use that TUSD for whatever reason. Um, there, and there's not a ton of it on Uniswap, which that is for bigger people might be a little bit of a problem, but like people I know they're getting in with thousand, 10,000, 20,000, not, not like it can handle that. But if they came to pulse chain, like you're talking about, could that be like the primary native stable of pulse chain? Is there any reason it couldn't be like, why, why is it not any bigger than what it is on Ethereum? Why, why aren't people using this? It's such a better option. Yeah. Uh, well, you got to look at, you know, what's the benefit of a Coinbase offering a, a stable coin is so that, you know, they can mint out and they can provide a lot of liquidity uh, on even DEXs and uh, or it can be put as liquidity by individuals instead of Coinbase itself. But uh, it's a one for one actual accounting escrow so the dollars that are minting TUSD are dollars that got wired in by people right and it sits in a bank account and it and it earns its modest little interest as far as its uh its value as far as uh the the uh what's locked up but by law it's locked up it, by law it can't move and be participating in other markets and you know trading against you or anything like that it's actually you know dollar ledger accounted um in its rule set. And I, I, I hear what you're saying also about like, I don't trade like my onboarding or offboarding may be in TUSD because that's just a better ramp, but I treat it as a bridge and it's just a ramp. And then once it gets into uh, an ERC 20 as a TUSD, it may be better just to flip it into USDC because, or, or a die or something like that that has higher volume in your trading pair that you care about trading into. So I probably wouldn't do TUSD directly into Hedron or directly into Hex or something if there if that if it made a significant difference in price. I haven't seen that, but you know, I can understand what you're talking about about it, whether it's popular or not popular. And they honestly they don't have a lot of the same marketing volume. You know, they're just a business of converting 
fiat into ERC-20. That's it's all not they're a scam, so it doesn't have the margin. <laughs> yeah. So they don't have leverage. Mm -hmm. They don't have, mar you know, they don't have cross marketing of, hey, we have leverage and we have, by the way, we're going to pay you, uh, you know, 8% for you to put your stable coin with us. You know, like they're doing with uh, Coinbase, right? Coinbase effectively is being a bank. You know, they're, they're offering you a, on your, on your USDC, <laughs> they're offering you an APY, right? Uh, but that is counterparty risk. That is uh, a sweet honeypot kind of situation. Um, yeah, so I would rather, I, I, I promote TUSD, but it's not as popular as a stable coin for a lot of those marketing reasons. Alternative to uh, on-ramping through Coinbase. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to check it out. I've heard you talk about it before, Gary, but uh, I think uh, I think it's, it seems like an underutilized thing, as, as Dixon was saying. And um, yeah, the I mean, sign up process is very easy. I mean, like, well, you start I'm, seeing. I've, I've, I've bought, and I've bought, you know, uh, $800,000 worth at one sitting, and I didn't have any issue whatsoever. Uh, went through fine because you buy and sell houses, you buy and sell businesses, and those have high dollar value. I know people that have gotten their uh, checking account because, uh, you know, at least temporary pause, if not closed, because of something as, you know, not inconsequential, but like five grand, five grand of a, US, of a uh, Coinbase transaction has closed off some people, 2017 especially. Uh, Bank of America used to be very, very strict about a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah, the, I, I like the SIC code is different. I like when I'm wiring money in. It's, it's going to an escrow company. I, it actually is over a network of over a thousand escrow companies in the United States. Uh, and they, they basically route through different escrow companies across that network. So um, again, banks are very commonly working with escrow companies that have that SIC code. And they're rarely or less often working with a cryptocurrency exchange, and they're not working very often at all with a marijuana dispensary or, you know, in Las Vegas, there might be other things that are, uh, you know, unsavory uh, or vices that, uh, you know, some companies or banks aren't going to work with. And, and some, some banks consider cryptocurrency in that same light. So that's why I still promote TUSD based on it being an escrow versus a exchange can you confirm that url that rh max put in the chat um the i went chat. through like the trust token website i think not There's that one trust token.com and then truesd.com are the okay. two ones i think I'm just very, i just wanted to double check because i'm very careful yeah. about uh links. Yeah, be careful about it it should load uh it is what i'm looking at is the htt I'll, I'll put it in here as well in the private let's do yeah drop in the private and i'll, I'll throw it in the chat it's the same one, um, but it is common spelling. Uh, Trust and a, make sure it's this, it's the HTTPS, you know, just like any other secure website. But uh, mm -hmm. it goes to trusttoken.com. And then when you actually list or you look on the products list, you'll see um, down, you'll scroll down and you'll see that it so it shows uh, true USD, which is a token, uh, Great Britain uh australia i don't know what tc i guess that's canadian and hong kong but again it's it's a one for one minting with uh it's a very small percentage uh escrow fee basically that they charge well maybe if if coinbase uh we ever get more rumors or confirmations if coinbase is freezing people's stuff there'll be a huge wave of people going to things like this uh, it could be a, a have a huge network effect for it it helps me a lot with my bookkeeping honestly like i don't like I, I like to say, here's what went in in dollar, and I don't want to have a lot of conversion cost. And like I had to buy the Ethereum end. off the market, and what was the dollar price of an Ethereum? And I don't, I don't like a lot of the conversion bookkeeping. So for bookkeeping reasons, I can say, here's <laughs> what went in. Here was my transaction cost of a uh, escrow fee or um, uh, you know gas fee or whatever, and that's my in, and then I can keep track. Uh, of any other transactions that occur, you know, in the amount of time that I have the TUSD. And then when I have that coming out and coming to the same bank account that got sent from the way it works is it's just easier for bookkeeping uh, as well. So I like it that way. 